my uh, good friends and colleagues, uh, the WI uh, Minister for Transport, Dean Older, but also the uh, Federal uh, Assistant Minister for Infrastructure, uh, Jamie Briggs, all the way over from South Australia, and uh, also uh, uh, my uh, federal colleagues in uh, Dennis Jensen uh, and Steve Irons, and uh, also uh, our state uh, colleague uh, here, uh, the member for uh, Forestfield. Now, uh, this is a very uh, exciting uh, day as we are uh, formally uh, announcing a significant federal investment uh, in a significant future economic infrastructure for Western Australia. The project overall, the Perth Freightlink uh, project, will involve $1.6 billion worth of investment, including uh, $925 uh, million uh, from the federal government. It will, it will uh, significantly uh, en encourage future economic growth uh, in Western Australia. It will be uh, delivering significant economic and social benefits in terms of uh, reduced traffic congestion, uh, in terms of improved uh, safety uh, on the roads and in terms of uh, maximizing our potential as a state uh, to uh, reach our full potential uh, into the future. And uh, it gives me great pleasure uh, to ask uh, Jamie uh, Briggs and uh, Dean Nolder uh, to proceed with the formal announcement. Well, thank you, Matthias. And uh, look, Dean, thank you, uh, my parliamentary colleagues. Also, Nick Coombe running the project, the Gateway Project, which is such an important part of uh, our plans here with uh, the Roe Highway. What we wanted to do here in Western Australia is create a continuous freight network uh, to get 65,000 big trucks off local roads uh, and ensure that freight uh, from this ever increasing and expanding this great state of, of, the, of our federation can continue to perform as economically as well as we want it to. Uh, the problem, of course, with the Gateway project was uh, while it's a very good project, a billion dollar project, it finished at a T-junction. Uh, and for years the Row 8 project was talked about but was never delivered by successive governments. In fact, the former Labor government tried to get rid of it completely. Uh, what Matthias Cormann did as a Senator of West, for Western Australia, uh, along with Dean Nulder and myself in the last two months, is put together a comprehensive plan involving the private sector for the first time in Western Australia to deliver a very important piece uh, of economic infrastructure. Uh, this will ensure that Western Australia can continue to grow uh, at the pace we want it to, to ensure our prosperity for the next generation. Our budget was about contributing and building. And here in Western Australia, there's no better example than building this very important piece of infrastructure. 65,000 uh, uh, big trucks off local roads is a big benefit for consumers uh, and it's a big benefit for the trucking network being able to get their freight uh, to port uh, and to market much quicker. So it is a great uh, pleasure to be here today to confirm the Australian Government's commitment of $925 million to ensure that the Gateway Project, the work that Nick and his team are doing, doesn't end in a T-junction and in fact ends in a continuous fl uh, uh, free run uh, to the port of Fremantle. Dean, do you want to? Add? Yeah, also uh, thank you, thank you, Jamie, and um, and likewise uh, from a state perspective, we're very appreciative of the support that we've received from the federal government uh, to really now tackle a complete freight corridor that will extend from Fremantle out through to Kudal and up to Mushe. Uh, it's really going to become the second freeway in Perth, which is fantastic. Um, as as Jamie just mentioned, a priority. Uh, for us as a government is to deal with some of the uh, bottlenecks that exist within the Perth um, uh, movement of vehicles and one of those is at the corner of freeway, the freeway and row highway, uh, particularly with the hospital coming on stream. We see that as a priority that we want to move on as quickly as possible to alleviate some of the pressure that exists on South Street. Uh, in addition to that, uh, where we are today on the corner of Row and Berkshire, uh, it is a black spot and again with the support of the federal government with Matthias and Jamie. Uh, uh, we've been able, and the pressure from the local member from Forestfield, uh, Nathan Morton, we've been able to tackle this black spot immediately and we'll be starting work on that uh, within the next couple of months. So again, very appreciative of the federal government's support and uh, really looking forward to getting this project underway. Questions? No, in, oh, terms of, in terms of questions, if we can take questions first uh, in relation to this project and if there are any other uh, budget related uh, matters that you want to ask about, we might take those second. Question to Minister Briggs, is there a cost benefit analysis that underpinned this decision to invest in this project and if so, will you release it? 
Uh, there is a cost-benefit analysis the Western Australian government's worked on, and uh, uh, of course, in time we will. Um, but we are involving the private sector, and so you need to take into account commercial uh, considerations to ensure the taxpayers get the best value. Uh, the cost-benefit analysis on this project is out of the ballpark. It's over five, uh, which, uh, given that we look at projects over one usually, uh, this is an exceptional project and uh, absolutely justifies the decision to fund it. What are the options for, uh, for any vehicle uh, charging of some sort has been um, publicly explored? Can you be more specific about the options for that? Well, we're working through that at the moment. We're getting expert advice from independent agencies. Um, but obviously, when you're involving the private sector, they expect a return. Uh, and usually, uh, transport companies are happy to pay if it means they're getting uh, more effective and efficient uh, uh, access to the port and along the, on the freight, run, uh, freight line. So uh, we, we absolutely need the private sector involved in this. It is an expensive project, but it has enormous economic benefit, and that's why we're funding it. And that's why we're so pleased the Western Australian government's agreed to involve the private sector. Dean, do you want to add to that? No, it's look. It's for us. Um, it's a perfect opportunity to to now examine how we work together with industry to understand uh, the benefits that will be achieved by industry, and then whether you know how uh, they can contribute in certain way through these benefits uh, to to the completion of this freight corridor. You're going to need 675 million dollars more, though. How much of that do you anticipate will be from state funding and from the private sector? What's the carve-up like? If we look at the total 1.6 billion, and, and the federal government has suggested uh, nine, well, they've offered 925 million, and they've offered to upfront that uh, for us. We now will be looking at 230 million of state funding, and the remainder being uh, with a private partnership. So it's 80 percent government, 80 percent of the government contributions federal, and 20 percent the state, and the remainder is made up of private sector contribution. Will this project go to Infrastructure Australia for their view? Of course. When will that happen? Uh, well, as soon as we're ready to put it through Infrastructure Australia and the Western Australian Government and my department are working through the detail of that now. Uh, we've been working on this for a, for a couple of months together to put this uh, put this together. We've involved independent agencies from government uh, uh, looking at this and looking at the prospects of the project. But as I say, uh, all the indications are that this has enormous economic benefit, well above nearly every other project we're funding across Australia. Uh, it adds to the value that the taxpayer is spending on the Gateway project, as I mentioned. Uh, the Gateway uh, is an enormous benefit for WA, no doubt, but at the moment it fi finishes at a T-junction. Uh, so you don't get the true benefit of this until you get through to the port. Uh, so combine this with the Northlink project, the old Swan Valley Bypass, which is getting new names every day, seemingly. Uh, we, we, we think this is an enormous benefit, not only for commuters in, in Perth, uh, but also for people in, in rural Western Australia getting their product to port. Well, it's been the usual practice of the Abbott government to make investment decisions and commit to projects before they go to Infrastructure Australia? No, but the problem we found with Infrastructure Australia when we came to government was that Infrastructure Australia uh, wasn't speaking to the states, which creates a fundamental problem. Uh, there had been a complete breakdown in trust between particularly the major eastern states and Infrastructure Australia, uh, where they weren't willing to give up information because they weren't sure whether it would be leaked to the media for political purposes. So we are dealing with the structures of Infrastructure Australia. We've de dealt with some of the personnel issues involved, uh, and Infrastructure Australia is now in the process of rebuilding those relationships. So in the future we want uh, an audit conducted by Infrastructure Australia with a 15-year plan in conjunction with the states that we'll work through. But in the early stages there are projects across the country which have enormous benefit and we want to get on with them because, as I said earlier, our budget was about ensuring we live within our means on one hand, but ensuring equally we've got an economic plan for the future to build a stronger Australia. Yeah. And this is part of that. Can I ask you about public reaction to the budget? Are, are there any more questions in relation to the uh, road announcement? Otherwise, we go to the budget. There have been some issues in other states with public private partnerships and investors um, being burnt. Do you have any concerns about the ability to, to get uh, private support? For this? Look, we need to explore what this will look like, and you know we, we, we're really at the early stages of trying to understand that. If you consider that this is actually a freight corridor that extends right the way from Mushay through to the ports, um, you know this is a huge opportunity, and and the private partner contribution of a to of the total project is only a portion. Mm. So I believe that we're looking at it in the right manner. We're not looking for the private sector to fund the whole lot. Um, the government, federal government particularly, uh, is making a huge contributions so you know I'd, I'd like to think that we're going to get that balance right but we now need to do the work on it. Is it a departure from the bipart previously bipartisan policy on not tolling roads in Western Australia? 
Look, it's, it is a change in the extent that we're going to look to uh, industry to uh, fund a portion of, of this in infrastructure. So yes, it is, a, it is a change in that sense. Well, and, and the important point here is, is that this is really about achieving a win-win. If we want to be able to make these significant investments uh, in building a stronger, more prosperous economy into the future, delivering benefits for industry, uh, then it's only fair that industry helps us uh, achieve the delivery of those projects. So, happy to go to questions on the budget now. Well, we, we, we are focused on uh, making the right decisions for Australia, not uh, on making the popular decisions. Uh, what we said uh, before the last election uh, we would do is uh, to fix the budget. We're working on fixing the budget uh, because that is the right thing to do for the country. Well, we're certainly very focused on explaining the decisions that we've made and the reasons for those decisions. We're focused on building a stronger economy, creating more opportunity, building a more resilient, more prosperous economy where everyone has the opportunity to get ahead. But at the same time, we're also focused on repairing the budget mess that we've inherited from our predecessors. And there are some difficult decisions that are involved in that. We're not shying away from it. Um, uh, no, we uh, never said it was going to be easy. We didn't think it was going to be easy. Nobody likes uh, losing uh, benefits at any one uh, point in time, but there's no easy way to get the budget uh, back on track. We, we said very clearly uh, in opposition uh, that uh, the age of entitlement uh, had come to an end. We are focused on replacing the age of entitlement with a new age of opportunity uh, where everyone has the opportunity to get ahead. The, the um, ending of Commonwealth funding for um, concessions uh, for seniors. Is that something that you think the West Australian government should pick up the bill for going forward, or will it be acceptable if they cut those programs by an equivalent amount to the funding that you've discontinued? Well, I mean, state government concessions are a matter for state governments. I mean, if state governments uh, are of the view that they should offer concessions, which uh, you know is appropriate, then it's a matter for state governments to determine how that uh, should best be funded. Uh, the federal government can't continue to spend money that we haven't got. Uh, the federal government uh, has to get back into a situation where we live uh, within our means. I mean, the, the situation that we inherited uh, is uh, where the federal government was borrowing one billion dollars a month just to pay the interest on the debt that the previous government accumulated. I mean, the situation we inherited was a situation where not only all of the uh, consumption was significantly put on the credit card, on the nation's credit card, but uh, the previous government took out a second credit card in order to fund the interest on the first. And I mean, everybody who runs a household budget across Australia understands that that is not sustainable. We had to put a stop to that unsustainable spending growth uh, trajectory and we're doing that. So if those concessions are unwound, will you put your hand up and take responsibility for them or will that be a matter for the states? Well, state government concessions are a matter uh, for the state government. I note in the West Australian this morning that the state government has said they're going to keep their concessions in 2014-15. It's going to be a matter uh, for uh, the West Australian state government and for state governments across Australia as to what they want to do in relation to their concessions, in relation to their services moving forward. How, how should the states be able to raise more revenue to pay for these things that, that you, you, you've made clear that the Commonwealth isn't going to continue to fund? Should they have more revenue levers available? And if so, what should they do? Well, well th th there's a range of uh, issues there. Firstly, all levels of government have got to live within their means. Uh, the previous Labor government at a federal level uh, was splashing money around, left, right and centre, including towards the state, money they didn't have. Uh, and what we're doing in this budget uh, is uh, to put our spending growth trajectory uh, on a more sustainable Level. We think that all levels of government ought to do the same. Uh, state governments across Australia ought to focus on uh, what they're spending their money on, making sure that their spending is as efficient and as well targeted as possible. Uh, beyond that, we do have to have a conversation about uh, the uh, proper functioning of the Federation, which is why uh, we are going through a, a Federation white paper process where the states will be able to put forward uh, their views as to how uh, they think federal state financial relations arrangements need to be improved. We also have uh, the tax review white paper process which will uh, commence uh, shortly and, and there will be ample opportunity for the states to express their views. Do you think the states need 
to do a better job on the spending side rather than the revenue side in the first instance? Well, I think that all levels of government, all levels of government need to ensure that their spending is sustainable. Uh, at the federal level, the situation we inherited uh, was unsustainable. We inherited an unsustainable spending growth trajectory. We've put a stop to it. Uh, spending at a federal level, including funding for uh, health and education, I might add, the federal contribution to uh, funding for health and education continues to grow, but it will grow at a more realistic, at a more affordable pace uh, than uh, the situation that we inherited from Labor. So is Western Australia's spending trajectory unsustainable? Well, I mean, I leave uh, you know, the state government of Western Australia to uh, explain themselves in relation to their spending. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the state government in Western Australia, no doubt, will make in Western Australia. We are taking responsibility uh, for the spending growth trajectory at a federal level and the spending growth trajectory that we inherited from Labor uh, on top of uh, massive debt and deficits uh, in the first six years, uh, in the first six budgets, was unsustainable. Do you think there's any exploring broadening the GST base? Well, we, we were very clear in the lead-up to the last election. We will not be uh, initiating any changes to the GST full stop, end of story. Uh, I mean, well, well, we, we, I mean, in, we have um, delivered a budget uh, that builds a stronger more prosperous, more resilient economy, which uh, starts to repair the budget mess that we've inherited, as we said we would do, uh, and which uh, keeps faith with the commitments that we made uh, in the lead-up to the last election. Is it the case that, as far as the Abbott government is concerned, any GST reform is, is a matter for the states and you've got no involvement with it? Well, we, we've been very clear that we would not be initiating any changes to the GST in this term of government. We've also said that we would have a uh, review of the tax system. We're also having uh, the review of our uh, federal-state uh, financial relations arrangements as part of a broader review into uh, our federation. Uh, th there are going to be a range of conversations uh, to be had over the next uh, uh, couple of years and we'll uh, have them in a calm, uh, orderly, methodical and careful fashion. Speaking of the federation and as a West Australian senator, is the fact that WA looks likely to get a larger ownership of browse gas a good outcome for the state? Well, um, obviously, uh, you know, what is happening uh, to our north when it comes to uh, gas uh, and LNG exploration and production uh, is very exciting. There's lots of opportunity uh, there uh, moving forward. And obviously, as a West Australian, I'm always happy to say uh, the economic benefits uh, for Western Australia to be maximised. Even though it means potentially less uh, revenue to the sphere of government. Well, I, 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 think we're, I think we're now uh, getting way beyond, uh, you know, what is uh, implications out of the budget. Any other questions on the budget? Thank you.